the presidential jet touches down on North Korean soil. <laughs> to the surprise of the entire world, North Korea's Defense Commission chairman comes to the airport to greet the visitor from South Korea. The first handshake between the top leaders of the two Koreas. And so, President Kim Dae-jung's historic three-day visit to North Korea begins. Welcome to Arirang TV special, opening an era of reconciliation and cooperation. I'm An Jung Hyun in Seoul. It has been a truly momentous week. The entire nation bated its breath as it closely followed the developments from across the border, where President Kim Dae-jung, as the first South Korean leader to ever set foot on North Korean soil, tried to bring back home what everyone was hoping for, a breakthrough in inter-Korean relations. And we weren't disappointed. President Kim delivered what he had promised. A joint declaration signed by himself and North Korea's Defense Commission Chairman Kim Jong-il, under which the two Koreas would work together towards eventual reunification. That agreement, as we will soon see, effectively opens a new chapter in the history of the two Koreas. If the previous chapter was filled with accounts of conflict and confrontation, the new chapter carries hopes for reconciliation and cooperation. Let's take a closer look. Dubbed the South-North Joint Declaration, the five-point agreement provides a framework for reconciliation and cooperation and, ultimately, reunification. If the July 4th joint communique wasn't implemented because its contents were too general and the basic agreement failed to be put into action because its contents were too specific, the June 15th joint declaration is said to be a compromise between the two. Plus, it was reached and personally signed by the top leaders of the two Koreas. According to the South-North Joint Declaration, the two Koreas agree to resolve the question of reunification independently. They recognize common elements in each other's reunification proposals. They agree to resolve humanitarian issues regarding separated families and communist prisoners. They agree to promote economic cooperation and exchanges in all sectors of society. They agree to hold follow-up talks to implement the joint declaration. And lastly... 이상과 같은 합의 사항을 조속히 실천에 옮기기 위하여 빠른 시일 안에 당국 사이의 대화를 개최하기로 하였다. 김대중 대통령은 김정일 국방위원장이 서울을 방문하도록 정중히 초청하였으며 김정일 국방위원장은 앞으로 적절한 시기에 서울을 방문하기로 하였다. Continued dialogue at the top level. So, this past week's inter Korean summit doesn't end as an isolated incident, rather, it serves as the start of a cooperative process. Another significance the two Koreas, for the first time, recognize there are similarities in each other's proposals for reunification. 
This effectively removes the threat of reunification by aggression or absorption. In other words, Seoul and Pyongyang have agreed to hold talks to come up with a single unification formula based on the common elements found in their separate proposals. And they'll try to find an independent way to resolve the reunification issue, meaning the two Koreas themselves will take charge of their own destiny. Professor Moon Jong-in of Yonsei University talks about the joint declaration as follows. The joint declaration has several you know, important implications. First, it is a declaration, not joint communique. North Korea traditionally adopted the format of joint communique. It is kind of a step up from the July 1st joint communique. Second important you know, significance of this joint declaration is kind of a really, it really reflects revolutionary changes in North Korean attitude toward South Korea. Okay? First of all, North Korea has been consistently refusing the recognition of legitimacy of South Korean government. They never used the term the Republic of Korea, just certain part of motherland. But this time, they fully recognized uh, legitimacy and kind of sovereignty of the Republic of Korea. And th that is embodied in the joint declaration too. Third. If you look at item two of joint declaration, North Korea for the first time accommodated the South Korean proposal of confederation. And even they made a concession by using the term a loose form of federation. And that means what? In the past, the North South Korea have been pursuing kind of parallel strategy. They talked, but they were not talking to each other. There was no intersubjective communication between the two. But this joint declaration shows that there are convergence points between the North and South in resolving unification issues. Perhaps the most important one is this. President Kim Dae-jung was able to persuade Chairman Kim Jong-il to visit Seoul in the, in the near future. It, it was a quite challenging job. Okay? And I think given all these you know, factors, I think the joint declaration has a really revolutionary history meaning in inter-Korean relations. The joint declaration also raises hopes for a solution to humanitarian issues. Red Cross officials from both sides will soon get to work, trying to organize exchange hometown visits by separated family members. The declaration even specifies a date for those visits, coming August 15th, the 55th anniversary of Korea's independence from Japanese colonialism. And the two sides will begin discussing the repatriation of prisoners serving long-term sentences in the South for refusing to give up their communist beliefs. As a way to build mutual trust, the two Koreas will promote economic cooperation, the South making the most of the North's cheap but high-quality labor, and the North taking advantage of the South's capital and advanced technology. Such a complementary economic structure is expected to lift what's mostly been private sector cooperation to the government level. In terms of social and cultural exchanges, there has already been significant progress. Now the two sides are looking to expand that to the fields of health and environment as well. Thanking Chairman Kim Jong-il upon reaching the historic agreement, President Kim said for the first time the Korean people can see a bright future and that hopes for reconciliation, cooperation and reunification are dawning. In addition to that landmark joint declaration, President Kim brought to us never-before-seen images of North Korea, including some up-close and personal looks at the ever-reclusive Defense Commission Chairman Kim Jong-il. President Kim used the words beyond expectations and grateful to describe the kind of welcome he received, not only from Chairman Kim, but also from the hundreds of thousands of Pyongyang citizens who turned out to greet him and again to see him off. Never in the history of North Korea had there been such a large turnout. 
South Koreans were glued to the TV for three whole days, keeping up with the latest goings on. In fact, the whole world had its eyes and ears riveted on the Korean peninsula as President Kim went about his business. At the start of the three days, Chairman Kim surprised the entire world by making a personal appearance at Sunan Airport to welcome President Kim. The surprise didn't end there. He rode from the airport to the hotel in the same limousine with President Kim. That had never happened in North Korea before. President Kim's arrival in Pyongyang attracted some 600,000 North Korean citizens as well. On the day that he left, some 300 to 400,000 turned out. That means around a million North Korean citizens came out to welcome and send off President Kim. It's a, a series of moments of enthusiasm. Okay. We encountered the unexpected appearance of Chairman Kim Jong-il at the airport. We witnessed him riding with President Kim Dae-jung on the way to the Pekon State Guest House. When we were overwhelmed by almost 800,000 Pyongyang citizens, Okay. The really cheering sound of the Pyongyang citizens, their bursting tears, they have all showed what? Authenticity and spontaneity. Obviously, they were mobilized. But even though they were mobilized, they were showing authentic welcoming of the South Korean delegates. The historic encounter between the leaders of South and North Korea also dominated headlines around the world. Major news agencies like AP, AFP and CNN all covered the airport welcoming as breaking news. The fact that Chairman Kim Jong-il had always shunned public exposure made their interest peak even more. Many of them saw it as a symbolic gesture toward inter-Korean reconciliation. The Japanese media said it was the first step to building trust. The U.S. and British press said it signaled bright prospects for the two Koreas. BBC even called it a historic handshake. Press organizations in China and Taiwan also followed the events very closely, some of them publishing articles that compare the divided peninsula to the plight in their own countries. Russia and Germany were no exception, placing President Kim's Pyongyang visit at the top of their news lineup. What surprised the world even more was the straightforward and outgoing, yet friendly and courteous way Chairman Kim Jong-il treated his South Korean guests. For someone many had considered a recluse, Chairman Kim had a totally unexpected side to his personality. I shook hand with him twice. I had a brief chat with him, but he was quite charismatic. He was quite commanding. He was quite entertaining with youth, wit and, and humor. And we come up with, you know, as you have gone through the, this identity crisis or perception crisis, we South Korean delegate in Pyongyang went through the exactly same experience of this confusion of perception of you know, Kim Jong-il. This was also apparent in the summit talks that were held between President Kim and Chairman Kim Jong-il. The two leaders held their first meeting as soon as they arrived at the Pekwa One State Guest House, where President Kim was to spend his two nights in Pyongyang. That session lasted for less than half an hour, as it was more like a casual encounter an opportunity for the two leaders to get to know each other. President Kim talked about the fine weather in Seoul and Pyongyang and thanked the North Korean leader for the warm welcome he received at the airport. Chairman Kim said he and President Kim, along with the official entourage from Seoul, had to let the world know why they were meeting right there and then, which observers at the time saw as a positive sign of things to come. And that answer did indeed come during their second summit, but not before its share of light humor and friendly chat. 
아침 어전 회담이 좀 내고 늦다만가 좀 급하게 자신은 그 국수가 원래 맛 없습니다. <웃음> <웃음> 앞으로 좀 시간 너무 많이 가지시고 천천히 잘 드신 바람. 네. 그게 피양 시민들은 뭐좀 대단히 좀 흥분 상태에 있습니다. 대통령께서 이렇게 직접 방문 척기 척기 듣고 정말 용단 내려서서 이렇게 오신 데 대해서는 정말 우리 이민들이 뜨겁게 이렇게 맞이 했는데 그래도 인사가 인사 차림이 제대로 됐는가 하고 이렇게 자신들이 걱정도 하고 있습니다. 아무나죠. 이 김현영께서 직접 공항에 나오시고 또 그렇게 수십 만 시민들이 나오고 그래서 아주 저도 참 감사하기 짝이었지만 남쪽에서도 많이 졸립니다. 남쪽에도 내가 어제 밤에 좀 늦게까지 대대비를 봤습니다. 남쪽에 MBC도 보고 서울도 또 봤는데 뭐 남쪽 이민들도 아마 다 가는 분이고 특별히 또 시량이라든가 탈북자이라든가 많이 소개해서 잘 봤습니다. 그들이 눈물 흘리면서 고향 소식이나 이번에 어, 전달될 수 있지 않는가 그 길이 빨라, 빨라지지 않겠는가 이렇게 많이 생각을 한다고 소개 많이 하십니다. 아니, 근데 그... 아, 실제 우는 장면이 나와. 네. 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 나, 나. 그 외부 기자도 또 수백 명 있는지 한 천여 명 기자를 통해서 기립박수하고 그랬다고 해요. 공안에서 압수하고. 내가 어제도 말씀드렸지만 인사, 첫 인사지요. 뭐 제, 그, 제가 무슨 큰 존재라고. 아마 지금 적들은 또 대박이, 아, 어, 외신도. 그 다음에 우리 저, 이, 어, 불아파 사람들이랑 자꾸 뭐라 말하는, 왜 운둔 생활하나? 운둔 생활하는 사람이 처음 나타났다. 난 세상에 뭐, 아, 과거에 저, 저 중국도 갔댔고, 뭐, 인도네시아도 갔댔고, 외국에도 뭐, 비공개도 많이 갔댔고 했는데, 나보고 운둔 생활을 하는데, 그래서 김 대통령이 옷에서 이제 운둔해서 해방됐다. <웃음> <웃음> 정말, 그런 말들은 그래도 좋아해. 하도 모, 모, 모르게 했으니까. 예. But as soon as the doors were closed, the two leaders got down to some serious business. That session had to break in its third hour for a recess as talks were getting intense. And it was during that break South Korea and the rest of the world found out the two were coming close to an agreement on some crucial issues. Everyone was waiting for a breakthrough announcement, and finally, four hours after the summit talks began, it came. The remaining hours of Wednesday, June 14th, were spent in anticipation of the agreement. Video footage of a signing ceremony began coming out of Pyongyang just around midnight. Later reports said the signing actually took place at 40 minutes to midnight. And in the very early hours of Thursday, June 15th, the South-North Joint Declaration was made public, giving hope to the 70 million Koreans their divided nation will someday become whole again. President Kim's Pyongyang visit is hailed as having brought the peninsula to a turning point where the two Koreas leave behind 55 years of division and embark on an era of peaceful coexistence and mutual prosperity. A crucial step has been taken towards reunification, and all that's left now is for South and North Korea to stick to their agreement. As President Kim said upon his return to Seoul, this is only the beginning. He came back having seen the possibility it will take time, patience, and most of all, commitment. In our next segment, we take a closer look at the historic and symbolic significance of this past week's summit. We also try to examine future prospects for inter-Korean relations and hear some expert opinions on the tasks that lie ahead of us. One thing that all experts say in unison is that this first-ever inter-Korean summit will be remembered as a landmark event that brought the leaders of the South and North together to discuss the future of the Korean people. President Kim Dae-jung and Chairman Kim Jong-il shared the view that even with conflicting ideologies and political systems, as members of the same ethnic group, the two Koreas can pursue common interests and overcome fierce international competition. And this is expected to serve as a booster to future inter-Korean relations. 
Even with external achievements set aside, the summit helped the two leaders build a relationship of trust outside the bounds of formality. Therefore, it would be no exaggeration to say the joint declaration was the very fruit of the two leaders' vision and determination. President Kim has consistently pursued his sunshine policy, even at the cost of attracting criticism from time to time. And this is because he had a vision. As he promised he would before leaving for Pyongyang, he remained warm-hearted yet cool-headed and in the end achieved what he set out to achieve. Chairman Kim Jong-il, meanwhile, by treating his South Korean guests with the utmost hospitality, was able to prove to the world he was confident in his political power. His actions no doubt helped to ease the feeling of animosity that South Koreans had of North Korea and the chairman himself. Now on the foundation that the two leaders began building, South and North Korea can launch government-level follow-up talks, as well as increase private-level cooperation and exchanges. As such contacts gain momentum, building of trust will naturally take place. The joint declaration has been signed, which means the road to better relations is wide open. All that remains is to take that road. Now it's really up to us, to the southerners and the northerners, northerners and the southerners, how to implement uh, this the epoch-making uh, uh, the agreements or uh, declaration. Many people uh, are now asking that is really North Korea changed or changing? I, my answer is this. Okay, if North Korea uh, is sincere enough to, to implement what have been agreed upon, they are changing. The summit has surely paved the way for North Korea to become a responsible member of the international community. Now it's up to Pyongyang and Chairman Kim Jong-il to open up. One major task, however, lies ahead for President Kim. As ties between the South and North improve, it's all the more important for Seoul to maintain close cooperation with the world's superpowers. So far, it's been a unanimous thumbs up for President Kim and his sunshine policy, and he'll have to make sure things stay that way in the years to come. Of course, we, we are entering an uh, entirely new era of uh, our relations between uh, uh, South and North, but we should be uh, aware of that our the, the major uh, powers uh, how they uh, 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 watch, uh, how serious they watch the, the implication of this summit, because uh, they have real stake on the Korean Peninsula. So, bearing in mind that our the old friends is uh, the attitude or their uh, the fr a friendship with us, and also our new relations with North Korea should be well kept. Another thing to keep in mind: South Korea cannot let its guards down. There shouldn't be the slightest of wavering in Seoul's defense posture, neither should there be a compromise in the sovereignty of the Republic of Korea. But together with the North, the South must travel on the path toward reunification, solving one problem at a time, as President Kim said, the easiest things first, because ultimately... <laughs>
President Kim left Seoul Airport with a heavy burden on his shoulders. How to live up with all the expectations, not only from home, but also from abroad. He tried to downplay these expectations, saying just the fact that he was meeting with the North Korean leader was significant enough. But from their first encounter at Sunan Airport, through the ensuing talks, there was only one thing on his mind, to bring back home a gift from the North. A gift of hope for families separated by the Korean War, as well as millions of other South Koreans yearning for reunification. And he did. Two and a half years of preparations paid off in just three days and two nights. And so, President Kim's historic trip to North Korea comes to a close, and someday, the divided peninsula would be a thing of the past. And that was our attempt at providing you with an overview of a milestone event that is sure to go down in the history books. As President Kim has said, well begun is half done. We've had a solid start. Let's all keep our fingers crossed for just as solid an end. That wraps up this Adirang TV special, opening an era of reconciliation and cooperation. I'm An Jung Hyun. Thanks to all of you for watching.